Many tests are built with a standard order to those tests, fixed form, it's the exact same test for each implementation. But there are more complex types of test delivery. One of those examples in classic test delivery is what's called linear on the fly, or LOFT. The science behind the LOFT is more complex than what I'm going to show today, but I'm going to show you an example of building out a LOFT exam, assuming some of the research and science has already been done. So to lay out a LOFT exam, you would build the items exactly as you would for a fixed form test. The difference is LOFT has attributes that are used to decide which items to pull. So I have a test here of quite a few items, I think in the hundreds. So yeah, 123 items. Each of these items have attributes on them. I listed who the author was, made up a fictional name. And then there are some key loft attributes or linear on the fly attributes. One is item correlation. So an item has to have the correlation between answering the item correctly uh, and it, it uh, deciding what a good value would be on the test. In other words, if I score well on this item, am I going to score well on this test? Difficulty, which is how often does the item get answered correctly or incorrectly. This is not used in LOFT, the key or the author, but I've tried to make it as realistic as possible. And then the standard deviation of that item, so the classic mathematical standard deviation. If an item is presented with correlation, difficulty, and standard deviation, those are the three key attributes, they can be put into a linear on-the-fly exam. The benefits of linear on-the-fly really boil down to each candidate should get a unique test. Now, mathematics would just indicate it's possible someone would get the same test, but it generates a new form for every candidate. The way that we do this, and I clicked on that quickly, is we click on the section settings. There are also test settings for LOFT if you have multiple uh, sections of tests, but it's done through the classic filtering, item filtering, item banking, uh, where all item banking is done. I click on filtering and then instead of doing by tag where I'd say give me five geometry items, five algebra items, and five trigonometry items, I go to this option called loft, linear on the fly. It then says on your attributes which one are you using for mean? So if you call mean P or you call mean uh, correct or you call mean um, whatever you call mean, uh, we, in this case we've called it difficulty. Standard deviation, we called it SD. And then total item correlation attribute, we called correlation. And then you say, what do you want your mean estimate to be between? And this is where the science comes in. I don't want to make it so tight because my item bank can't generate a test with a mean between these values, but I don't want to make it so loose that I'm giving candidates a disparate test, meaning some are harder, some are easier. So I've given uh, some pretty wide range of, uh, of variants here uh, that would not be practical probably on a real implementation. You'd want to narrow it down to something pretty tight. So I'd want it to be like between 0.7 and 0.85. My standard deviation, uh, something tighter than six points, and my mean estimate probably within two or three points. But it all depends on my bank. If I only have 10 items uh, and I want to deliver three of them, that's going to be difficult. I'm choosing to deliver 25 items in this case. Uh, we saw in the beginning I had over 100, so it should be fairly easy to generate a test that has a mean estimate uh, between these standard deviation for 25 items. I can use some of these other attributes like enemy items, and I could say I don't want the test to have any, any enemy items. So if item number 8 and item number 17 are enemy items, they cannot be delivered together. So the execution on LOFT is quite simple, uh, as I've laid out here. It's the science behind it that you have to make sure is good. So I'm going to click Finish. I'm going to click my little eyeball and click Save, and it will generate a unique test for me using the LOFT algorithm that I input here. Uh, so it's going to say, do you want to keep that uh, LOFT filtering on? And I say yes, and it delivers that exam for me. So that's the basic setup of LOFT. There is another option that you can use in the validation, and you can say, I want to simulate 50 items and run that simulation, and it will give you some good data on how those unique loft forms were generated. So once again, this is a, 
scientific uh, aspect of the system, but it'll say how many unique forms did we have? What did those unique forms look like? And it shows the different way that those items can be delivered. Uh, what was the average overlap on statistics, uh, number of items per test, successful attempts, number of duration. So it gives you some great statistics on that loft test that you built. So kind of to reiterate here, uh, the execution of loft is simple. You click on the settings, uh, you go to the item attributes, you filter them, and you, you uh, use your correlation, your standard deviation, and your mean or difficulty. And if you're doing some validation as a scientist, we can show you unique forms, uh, standard deviations, overlap statistics uh, to help you get uh, the most accurate version of loft that you need. If you do need help on this, you can reach out to an IO psychologist uh, and we can help you get that set up.